Okay, there's two tests that you need to do on these elements, cooker elements, to make sure that they're safe and test them. Basically, they know what people mostly do is the continuity test. So basically, you take a reading of the continuity. There you go, it's saying 36.3 ohms. That's 36.3 ohms. Or you could just go on to continuity mode. You get a buzz and 36.2.4 ohms on that one. So basically that tells you that the element inside the casing of this is all intact and it gives you a reading so you can calculate roughly if it's about correct. If you look on the bottom of this obviously it's really hard to see ah so the other side that's why we've got 1400 watts on that so 36 ohms I'll just calculate that so it's 240 divided by 36 point Two. Two forty. It's roughly six point seven amps. So multiply multiply six point seven by two forty. Well that's saying 1600 watts but it's close enough for me that is, I didn't do a proper calculation then so. But anyway, that's how you test for continuity and you can check against the power rating of the uh, plate to make sure it's alright. Now I'm going to check for insulation resistance. So basically I'm setting insulin resistance test to 500 ohms. So, sorry, 500 volts on its highest rating. So now on the test, if it's a good reading, it'll over limit on the high mega ohm scale. If it's faulty, it'll be lower. And as you can see, that one's testing at naught because it's a short circuit. If there's anything less than 20, then you've got problems. To test, you want to be testing from one side of the element to the earth or the casing, don't really matter, and then test. So that one's uh, got over limit again, it's gone right off the scale, so you know it's good. Check the other side of the element. And it's gone right off the scale again, so you know it's good. So basically, I know that this is electrically uh, good, and the insulation resistance is good.